Hi everyone, I'm Eileen Hull and I'm so excited to be here today because we are going to launch a collaboration with a partner of ours and that is Gel Press. So wherever you're watching from, whether it's um, YouTube or Facebook or maybe you're a re uh, replay viewer, welcome. Um, we're going to have fun today. I have a stack of stuff here that we are going to play with. But first, I just wanted to talk a little bit. In case you don't know me, I'm a designer for Sizzix. I've been with them 13 years now. And uh, I design dies that are called scoreboards. So they're meant to work with thick material, mat board, chip board. So I am really excited to have another way to decorate the covers of my dies because they come out blank. Uh, but then it's so great and easy to add the gel print to the covers. So, hey, everybody. Hi, Allison, Laura, Brenda, Charlotta, Christy, Angie, Cassandra. Hey, how are you, Cassie? Lisa, Mona. Wow. Okay. You are hopping on there right away. Is everyone excited about this? So, all month uh, on the blog, we are we have 12 members either of the inspiration team or education team. We open it up to whoever jumped in first. So we have 12 uh, folks from the team. And so watch our blog all month because we are going to be working with the gel press. Okay, so uh, you're going to see some really cool stuff. We have a post scheduled to go up today. And uh, I know one of the, the uh, projects we already showed, and that was a journal by Karen Bierce, which is amazing. Uh, in fact, the first time I met her, she was demoing gel press at his local store. So uh, I, I know she's been doing it for a while. I am, I'm, uh, it depends on the day. <laughs> I love watching the videos and getting all the ideas, but when it comes down to it, maybe I don't have the right supplies. Anyway, I'm just going to go over the things that you need, and they're really very basic. Hey, there's Cheryl. Oh, good. Everyone, Cheryl is from Gel Press. She is the creative director for them. So if you have any questions, you can direct them to Cheryl. But I'll tell you, if you're looking to find a Gel Press, if you don't have one, you can either go to your local store. A lot of them carry them. Um, if you're in the U.S., you can find them at gelpress.com. Or if you're overseas, you can go and find them on Amazon. So, um, and with the dies, if you're looking for them, maybe you're, you've never seen my products, you can check out my uh, Etsy store, Eileen Hull, or you can go to Sizzix or your local stores, wherever you can find uh, scoreboard dies. So uh, go ahead and check them out. Hi, Sue from Australia. Did you notice I put on the invitation, the Australia time? <laughs> It's a new addition. The things I do for you guys. <laughs> so uh, I'm glad to see everybody here. Hi, Laura, Michelle, you're working on a new art journal. See, these are perfect, not only for your covers, but for your pages. And also they cover, the technique covers a multitude of sins. So say you have papers and they're kind of banged up or they have a mark on them, just press right over them and you can add layer on layer, which is really great. You can use all of your um, things that you already have, your stamps, your, and then anything. Like I have a, I was <laughs> putting in my contacts and I thought, you know, I'm going to use the cover to my contact case and see what happens with that. So play around with it. It's one of those things that, um, oh, thank you, Leslie. Not always. Hi, Valentina. Hey, there's Chris Flint. You have another day off. That's great. Hi, Janine. So you guys can probably give me tips. The way I look at it, it's always kind of an experimental journey and we can all help each other. So if I mess up, learn from me and I will learn from myself. I may forget, but <laughs> do it again. But, you know, some of my best things have come from mistakes, I will say. So I'm trying to fix them or whatever. Oh, okay, Sue. Oh, okay. Sorry. Australia is a big place. I did it from Sydney, but I wasn't sure where everybody was. I just put Australia. So sorry about that. But hey, there's Taylor. Hi, Taylor. 
Okay. Um, who just said Mary has not much done much on the gel press? Okay. Well, we'll learn together. Okay. Hey, Susan. Oh, <laughs> St. Thomas Hospital, London. What? Oh, hi, Sue. All right. Well, that's good. All right. So let's just, uh, just a couple announcements. Um, like I said, we're having a blog post go live today. So this is the kickoff of the uh, gel press collaboration. So make sure to check that out. And we'll be sharing that on social media also. Um, if you're not following me on YouTube, uh, that would be great if you could do that because um, I'm. It, it just helps. If you're looking for a video, go to YouTube because it's easier to find there than uh, Facebook. You don't have to scroll down and all that. So. Uh, just for that purpose, it's it's handy to uh, have access to uh, YouTube. And while you're there, if you want to follow me, that would be great. Or subscribe to my channel. Um, thank you. Uh, you can check out my updated Etsy shop. I put in the pre-orders for the Chapter 1 dies, so you ca can go ahead and order. I have limited quanti quantities, so if you want them right away, go over and uh, pre-order. Um, I also have some new stamps in there. Well, they're rubber instead of the, um, clear. So if you need them, go ahead over and look. Um, if you're new to the page, uh, we do lives twice a week right here on this, uh, channel, either on YouTube or Facebook, usually, usually on Facebook and sometimes on YouTube where I'm trying to be better about, I have lots of resolutions. Let's just say that. I don't know if you guys do them. Gel press and jelly art. Yeah, two different ones. So uh, anyway, I'm trying to be better. I'm still on the chicken salad diet day six, and I've lost eight pounds, and I can fit in my pants, and I'm very happy about that. So I'm hoping I stay on that good trend. <laughs> we'll see. I still have food from, I have fudge in the refrigerator from Christmas, which is torture. So we'll see. Uh, what else? Uh, if you haven't joined the Eileen Hall fan club on Facebook, go ahead and do that. Um, we recently had a lot of new members join and there are issues that come up all the time. So if you feel like you're alone, maybe you're new to Sizzix, um, go ahead over to the fan club, just answer the questions so we can, um, you know, make sure you're legit and uh, join the group because that's where we really get into the nitty gritty where people have questions. And I want you to be happy with your dyes. I want them to work. So if you have any questions, just uh, put them up in the group and we will help you out. Okay. Maybe not me because I'm not the quickest. I get on there. It's like, how did 16 comments get here? And I missed them. Um, the, an official chicken salad diet. <laughs> No, it's my, this is my pre-CHA diet that I used to do 10 days before I would leave. And um, what it is, is just like, basically, I go to either Chick-fil-A or um, where did I go? Wendy's last night, they had a very nice pecan chicken salad. <laughs> and uh, I just order a salad and that's all I eat for the day. And magically, <laughs> the weight just goes away. But uh, it's it's working, and you know we all have to do our what we can. To, I'm just it was too much. Like the holidays killed me, and our vacation, you know. So anyway, yes, chicken salad. You maybe Angie, you wouldn't like it after a week, but <laughs> it's. I have one more day, and then I'm gonna branch out, and I'll do a sandwich at lunch and dinner. What I'm gonna make for my husband, and nothing else. So that's the plan. Yeah, Chick-fil-A is very good salad. I like the Cobb salad. <laughs> Iris, Juana, Karen. Where is, I just saw somebody. Anyway, um, hello to everybody and thanks for popping in. All right, so let's get started on this. Um, let me just make sure I said everything. Um, what I'm gonna do basically is I'm gonna show you the things that I use. They may be different for you, use what you have. But uh, hey, Karen and Vanessa, uh, you know, I'm just going to kind of go through what I have, the way I do things, whether they're right or wrong, 
there is no right or wrong. So lucky for me, <laughs> but you do it how you learned or how you want to. And then at the end, we can all kind of pool our knowledge. And if you have any, just put them in the chat and I will be, I'll read them later because I'll try and pop in, but sometimes it's hard to see with all these technical things I have to do. I'm hoping when I switch cameras, it's not going to get all weird and uh, we'll see. All right, hang on. Let me bring this other camera over and then I'm going to switch to that and hope that you can hear me. All right, let's see. Uh-oh. Let me see here. Wait a minute. I have to adjust something. It's asking me a question. Would like to access... Oh, no. All right. I think I'm muted, though. Yes. All right. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Let's see. All right. How is it, guys? Can you hear me? You packed your gel presses. Oh, Leslie, moving is a pain. Ugh. Well, you can, you know, just have that in mind. All right, so let me show you some of the things that you can hear me perfectly. Yes, excellent. Oh, this is like, I'm afraid to say, but this is the smoothest transition we've had yet. Okay, so today... Um, we're going to use these Sizzix um, creamy acrylic paints, and they are beautiful. They are just so pretty. Um, they have a whole, I think there's some other colors too. This is what I have. But when I work on my gel press, now last time I used these three colors together because I wanted to try some like kind of ombre looks, but this time I want to use a metallic because those are so rich. And I may have to go with maybe these because they'll blend a little bit. If you have too many, they can tend to get muddy, and I have had that problem. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go with these for this round, and then we'll switch off. The other thing that you're going to need is a brayer or two uh, that looks like this. Mine is messy. I scrubbed it off, but uh, I still didn't do a very good job. But you can take these off to clean them, and then they just click back in. So if everybody has a brayer, that's good. All right. And then um, the way I'm going to lay it out, I'm going to put this down. I'm thinking maybe it'll be better for you to see on white and then I'm going to put this little mat over here for when I, wait a minute, I should go this way. When I kind of, I bray, brayer this off. I don't know what you call it, but that is my plan. Okay, now the other thing that you need is your gel press plate. They come in all different sizes. This is a small one. It depends on what it is that you're going to print. This is eight by 10, and I do like this for the journals that I wanna do, because I'm gonna lay them sideways, and I think I can get two covers done in one pass. So if you're doing like a little tiny book like this, you know, I was gonna do one of these, that would fit on a five by seven, and you could do even probably front and back. So just think about what it is that you're gonna do. If you have any ink left over on your plate here, you can just brayer that off on, or, or you can put down another piece of paper and just use that paper for an off print that you can use in your book. So there's, you know, there's no limits on this. Um, just, it, it's how it works for you. All right, let me just move things around a little. Cello tape cleans it and makes washi tape. Well, that's cool. Um, yes, Angie, this paint is beautiful. Now, here are a couple other things that I was gonna use. <laughs> nice little stack of stuff. Um, these are my stamps with Maker Forte. So what I'm thinking is, especially this one, like I want to um, lay the paint down and then pull it off with this to create a pattern and then, you know, lift the print up reverse. You'll see in a minute. But anyway, these are some other ones. So if you do journaling cards, you know, this would be a great uh, thing that you could put your journaling card over this and make 
a card that says fashionable, but fashionable buttons and make a little button card. Um, you can do these little doodle flowers and they'd already be filled in with color, but you could add accents with like a white pen when it dries or a black pen or um, I just got some of those Posca pens and I want to try them out. But anyway, these are some of the uh, stamps that I want to try out. And then I also have the dies, which I thought um, these would be a cute little size to test something. So this is the tiny book. And we ha also have the notepad. This is a more recent one that just came out. And uh, that's a nice size too. And then I wanted to use the two mandalas for stencils. So I cut them out of the gel print, jelly print, no, what are they? Deli paper. <laughs> They're very soft. I use, or thin. I try to um, put them in between when I'm cutting paper and it, it lifts out a lot of the little pieces in here. So I have a lot of them. They're very fragile. You can only use them one time, but still. Oh, thanks, Cheryl. Gel print, gel plate printing, the best, yeah. You lay two side by side for when you have extra paint. Yes, little waste. Okay, roll over the dirty dry gel place with white acrylic and let dry a bit when you make a print. It'll tear off the rest of paint smudges. Oh, that's good to know. Okay, here's the other one. This is the pocket notebook, and this is a cute size for the 8x10. So that's what I'm going to use. And I have cut out a couple, but I also want to try some other materials. And I'll just be putting them in here. We're just going to go to town and start doing this. Okay, so let's get our, our gel plate out. And it comes in this nice little storage case, so you can just open it up and keep it in here and know where it is. And um, inside there's directions how to clean it. They said a baby wipe or, you know, depending on what the substrate is that or the um, paint or whatever it is that you're using to put the color on, uh, you clean it different ways. You know, they have all that stuff here. So anyway it's pretty easy so mine is not clean <laughs> because like i said i was using those other colors so um let's see. let's get started i'm kind of nervous it's like ugh, every time i want to do it right but i i'm sure i'll get to where ah let's just put some color on here so you don't want to put too much because it gets sticky and not, um, in fact, I may already have too much. I, I haven't practiced today, so I have no guarantees here, but that might be too much also. But you can brayer it off and, you know, then try again. Oh, yeah. Whoa. All right. Well, let's see. No promises, guys. But you want to try it. It's really fun. But you have to, like, ease your way into it. So what I do is just kind of go down a couple times like this. And then, you know, I just kind of blend it. All right. This is just starting. <laughs> Starter. See, it blended kind of into itself. But who knows? Let's, uh, let's just do one and see what it looks like. I think I did too much. Maybe these colors are, maybe let's add a little white. Maybe a little more of the gold. Probably should not even put the caps on because, whoa, that was a lot. Well, we'll have a nice streak of gold. Is it okay to add paint extender to slow the paint from drying? I don't know, Cheryl. Is that uh whoa, look at that. All right, that's gonna be well, that's a little more interesting for sure. I never said I was an expert, right? <laughs> okay, let's just see what happens because I really want to try some of these different um materials of which we didn't even talk about. This is an envelope. So different uh envelope or different some what do you call these papers or whatever it is are going to act differently 
So let's just see. Now, if you want, you can take, oh, I was going to put white paper over here so I could brayer it off. And I can't find it. What did I do with that? Oh, here, it's underneath. All right, so this is my place where I can un load my brayer when I want to. But the other thing that you can do is you can take a piece of paper to kind of keep your hands clean and lay that on top and just kind of make that part of your paper. So now we'll kind of have a little frame here. I didn't center that too well, but that way all of the, um, see, maybe this is not a good idea because it's, it's moving around, but let's see. It's always so exciting. Well, that's cool. See, now that lifted off some of that pink that we had on there from the start when I didn't clean it. But that's kind of a cool little sketchy frame. And we could even go over it again if we want with a smaller, if we had a smaller envelope, which I do. But let's see what's on here. <gasps> Whoa. Cool. Look at that. <gasps> This would be a great place to put your little journaling message. But see, if you took this and put it in your journal and just folded that over, you already have like a cool cover for either a page or, you know, you could also like close this, cut a something in the top, and then you'd have pockets that you could stick things in here. So you can see it. There is no limit on what you can do. I... I'm going to try and pick this up. Let's see what happens. Okay, dried. So that will come off in the next version of this. So um, I still, I like that because I like having a little bit of white space here where I can write something. So I'm going to leave that, but let's add a little bit more. And let's go with these same colors. And I'm going to leave the cap off because I don't want to keep messing with it. But, I mean, you kind of get into this trance of, you know, what, what would happen if I did that color? Or what would, what would this combination look like? And I do want to try some of the things. I mean, I watched the videos, like I said, but it's different when you go to do it. <laughs> As with many things. Oh, I can do that. Uh, no, you can't. <laughs> Not well, anyway. This looks pretty, though, doesn't it? I kind of don't like when there's a pattern, so if you want to, you know, that looks really pretty. All right, let's see. Let's do, um, now here is the deli paper, which is very, very thin. You know when you get cold cuts? Who carries the gel plate products? Christy, um, maybe uh, Cheryl, if you're there, can you let, maybe you could put some links in, Cheryl? That would be great. Okay, this is, you know, when you buy a pound of turkey, that's what they use to wrap it. And it's very light. And the reason I want to try this is because what I'm thinking is I will print on here. And then when I go to cut my, my page or, or my die uh, cover, or whatever, I can use this and put it on the cover. And I think I could kind of have a little more, I can arrange a little better. Oh, that's pretty. Look at that. Now that gold is, is kind of sitting on top of the white, which is interesting. Try putting a ripped out page of a glossy magazine on top of your paint. It'll transfer the, oh, of course. It said don't use glossy, so I don't have one piece of glossy here. But that's all right. Um, I did want to try this because <laughs> look at that chicken. Isn't it great? So let me move it this way. I don't have one glossy thing on me. But I don't mind all of these different colors. I like everything so far. Now, uh, my friend Karen Beers, you should um, check out her post on um, her page. Karen, uh, I forget what the name of it is but um we'll have it on the in the blog post today she has this little stand it's like a, a a baking rack or something where she puts all of her papers in after she's done so they can dry flat uh or you know 
without running into each other. I thought that was a cool idea. All right, let's um, let's add a little bit. Let's do some. Let's do some more gold. Maybe that's not so much. And let's do some white and some of this. Whoa, that's a lot. All right. Well, you know what? We'll just brush it off. I mean, it's like being a kid and playing in the, I don't know, with cray well, better than crayons. Look at that already. Isn't that beautiful? Now, you do have to be kind of quick. So let's see what happens with our rooster. I think this is going to be amazing. And keep a, a rag somewhere because it does get your hands a little. Oh my lord. Look at this. Now it's thin, so it's curling up, but all right, our chicken is gone, but that is beautiful. What a cool background. All right, I'm going to put this over here. All right, let's keep trying different things. Let's try the stencil. Now, I I have a couple different ways that we could do a stencil. I've got this, um, this I cut out of fun foam. This is the heart mandala. Oh, okay. There's gel press. Oh, hello. Um, this I cut out of fun foam and I stuck it to a piece of actually dye packaging and I use that for a stencil. So I thought I want to try that on here, lift that off, put it on something else. And then I'd have the reverse of that on here. He, so that I have two of these. Oh, and that's like uh, snowflakes and some other stuff. Where's my other one? Right here. This one is so delicate. Um, and then I have these, which I've cut out of Sizzix surfaces. And these are so tough. They're really, the, you can see the pattern on here. But this is going to stay together really well. So I thought that's a good way to use that one. And then here are the kind of disposable ones that were made out of the uh, deli paper when I cut them. And it was kind of so that it released the regular paper that I was trying to cut. So these are fun byproducts. So I'm going to set those down and put them on and see what happens with that. All right. So let's load this up again. Do you think we should switch colors maybe? Black would be crazy, wouldn't it? I don't know. I, I normally would never use black, but I may just have to give it a try here. Why not? What well, with everyone watching, <laughs> right? What else? Maybe, um, maybe this blue. All right, let's see what happens here. This is gonna be dramatic, guys. Whoa, I don't know. This is not me, but let's see what happens. It'll be something. It looks like nightmare, but let's put it on here just to see. Oh, wait, let's put one of these on. And there's another one. Let's see what happens. Could be really cool. Who knows? See, it's just like, just see what happens. You can always use these uh, papers somewhere. So just hang on to them and put them in a folder somewhere. And let's see. Ooh, that is actually really cool. I like that because it's got the white to kind of make it not so heavy, don't you think? Now you're getting into it, Cindy says. Go for it. That is neat. Now I want to put something on top of that. So what I could do is take my brayer. Well, let me just do. Yeah, that might blend it in. See, this is coming out streaky dark. But that's even okay because that's kind of cool. I don't know if I can continue with this black. It's, it's scaring me. <laughs> I'm a pastel person. But I have these pretty little 
Let's see, it even has a handle to pull it off. That's the thing. All right, now that's gonna be on the plate. If I can get it off, that is my, was my question. If this is too thin to peel off. So you, ooh, you gotta be really careful here. But that should leave an imprint around it. Oh, might be tearing a little, I can't tell. Well, all right, let's see what happens. Now let's do white over this and kind of clean it all off. Let's see what happens. I love this paint, it's so creamy. I don't really have a system for how I add the white paint, but I think I should be neater. But I mean, this is such a not neat project or you know technique that that seems silly to care about being neat when there's stuff everywhere. All right, let's see if this cleans it off. According to watching all those videos, it should. <laughs> it's different when it's out in front of you. Definitely keep every print. I pulled my file of basic prints and used a huge collage. Oh, that would be neat. Oh, it did pretty much work. Oh, look at that. And now we have those prints on there. That is so cool. It's like a history of all the colors that we've had so far. And look how shiny that is. You know, this is not a shiny paper. This is copy paper, but it's got that nice sketchy background there. And that, oh, that's like my favorite one. Well, I don't know about my favorite, but it's very, very cool. All right. The other thing that I wanted to try was black mat board. So let's do something light and maybe metallic on here. And we'll still get some of this to come on. Wow. Well, that's... A lot uh, on black. Let's try again a little blue. Yeah, I am going through the paint pretty well. I mean, I haven't had it where it seems like too much yet, which I thought I would. But you know what? I was using a smaller plate last time, so I guess proportionally I'm not using as much. But when your brayer starts slipping around, that's when it does feel too much. And when your paint comes off and it's thick and opaque, then you have too much. So what you can do in that case, which I just did, is just put one on here, lift off what is, you know, extra, and see those blobs right there? Those are, but that's still pretty. All right, let's see. Uh, now let's let's see if this will transfer. I just want to see what happens with the black, but now I lost my gold, so I'm gonna put a little bit more. See how you could go through like many tubes of paint in a quick bit. But so what? You only live once, right? I mean, I'm tired of holding on to stuff in the hopes that I might use it. I just got, need to do it. All right, so I'm gonna. I'm going to put that down and see what happens. But it's really going to be rich. And then maybe we'll turn it over and do this side too. Let's try some of the mandala cutouts on first, paint, then paint over and remove. Okay, we'll do that next. That's cool. You know what's neat? You can see the, the texture of the mat board. Um, where it didn't go down into it. That's kind of cool. That'd be a good word bubble there, you know? And if you use this for the cover of a book, that would be really neat. You'd have to do two of them together because, uh, you, well, you might want matching ones. Let's just do this uh, contact thing because everybody always adds their little circles and you know, bubble wrap and all that, uh, which I did bring up here too. This desk is disaster because I had all this stuff I wanted to use or try. You know, let's see what happens. And let's do that one on here. That might be neat too because, you know, even having nothing in the middle 
that's good because then you can write on it. Oh, that is neat. That bubble wrap, I see why they everybody does that. Even so you could even trim that off and use it as a, like a border or something, you know. Eileen gets grungy. <laughs> Little paint goes a long way when gel painting. Yes. All right, let's try that mandala trick. So put them down first, then put the paint on over. All right, let's use this one. This one is messed up. I tore it or something, but I don't care. Uh, here's another one. Okay. All right, let's see what happens, Chris. I don't know. I really have no idea. White. Let's do the black again. I'm really getting daring. All right, here we go. Up, oh, came right up. Sucked in. I think I wasn't careful enough. Let's see. Well, we can try it here. It's lifting up a little, but that's all right. I mean, this is all experimenting, you know? So don't worry if you if everyone is not perfect. Oop, took another one out. Oh, but look at that. What's left? That's cool. Let's see what happens there. Let's make a little, let's do a book because I cut out a couple of these little tiny books. Let's see what happens. Cute. Oh, that's nice. Let's do the inside too. Let's put something over this so we don't. Uh, you can see, you're going to have paint everywhere, which, oh, that's neat, too. And then if you don't get enough or you want to cover, just go around and lift up paint. It may have dried by now. So depending on your paint, you know, some probably have longer drying times, but I know someone was asking about the extender, and I'm going to have to go back and read that after All right, that's kind of cool. You know, and the other thing is, if you don't like it, paint over it and do it again. I don't know. Not everyone is going to be a winner, but so what? That's the fun of it. All right, I'm going to do this over the whole thing and see what lifts up. And let me pick something first, because I have stacks of paper and things that I haven't even tried yet. I haven't tried plain old white mat board, so let's do that. Actually, let's do a pocket notebook. Well, I'm going to try this first, and then we'll do a pocket notebook, okay? So I'm just covering this whole thing so that it lifts up whatever. I don't think that was a good idea, having this white thing under it. I'm going to move that because it's just slipping. Okay. Let's see. After having worked with a gel press, you'll look at items in your house with different eyes. So many things could be used for printing. Oh, actually, I did do a rubber band around a brayer, so we need to try that too. Okay. Look at that. Wow. That looks so collage-y. That is cool. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's go over here and do the back because as well. I mean, the colors will be the same on either side. I think I'm going to change my colors or not. I don't know. See, that was... It dried too quick. All right, I'm going to have to get quicker with this. All right, I am going to clean this off, even though that's kind of the cardinal sin. I want to change colors. And I'm going to go with these, these colors, I think. So let me get the baby wipes and see how this comes off. When I did it last time, I took it in the sink and, you know, just washed it. But... 
think you need, if you're cleaning off like oil paints or that, you know, oh, that, you know what we could do is try that. I did try that cellophane tape. We've got a nice strip there. Let me get that. Let's see how that works. Right, here's my shipping tape for Etsy orders. Now we're going to make some washi. Isn't this fun? I don't know if you're having fun, but I am. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I bet you could do it again, too. I mean, that's just cool. I wonder if, um, I'm not sure if this is real sticky. Let me, um, I have another one that's thicker. Oh no, that is the thick one. I don't know where. Right, that's good enough. Oh, there goes that. Hmm. Maybe it's not wet enough. It's not really picking that up. Oh well. I don't know. I'm just. Oh, there it goes. You really have to give it a good. Oh, be careful. Gel plates do not get along well with silicone. Is this silicone? Uh, what do you do with the tape after lifting off? Well, I, I see how you could use that as washi tape. I mean, it's shiny, but so what? Um, you could layer that on like a piece like this you know, and just kind of give some background to that. I think that's kind of cool. That, uh, that media mat is made of glass. I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm just playing with my prints here. You know, I don't know. I think that's kind of cool. You might have to well, I think there's enough of the stickiness to stay on a page. This place is a disaster. But uh, let's see what else we have here. Now this, I'm not sure where I got this paper, but it's a really nice weight. But I don't think that's going to come off. So let's put some more weight on top here and just, let's try this thing too. Why not? That's way too much, but let's put that over all of these places where there are color and see if it comes off. And use this to get it off. Cheryl was probably saying that woman is. <laughs> I just haven't done it as much, Cheryl, but I will. Because now it's like, I see all the stuff that people are doing, and I know there's a way. Brenda, if you don't like the shine, you can use masking tape. It has a grungy look. All right, that didn't come up. Well, whatever. I could go to the sink, but you know what? I have another gel plate. Let's just use a smaller one. I'll clean that later, because I just want to use new colors. Uh, so we'll use this one. This is all good. Experimenting is playing is the fun. How you get learn better rather than that's true because you watch those videos. They're like, you know, so fast and you can't remember when did they do that? How did they do that? Um, yeah, that's with anything. When you're creating, you have to do it yourself to really get the Wow. Oh, we didn't even use the stamps yet. Let's do some of them. All right. Let's use the flowers because I think those would stand out. So these are some of my doodlings. All right. Let's see. I think, yeah, flowers. See, now this one, I don't... I did not um, keep my plate under it, my uh, plastic, and it 
it's kind of a little out of whack. I have it somewhere. Um, what color? Let's do, yeah, let's do these. And let's use a fresh brayer too. Just, or you know what? The one with the rubber bands. Because that only has white on it. So let's just see what happens here. Oh, I like those colors. Yeah, the rubber bands are adding just like a little bit of texture to it. Not sure how that's going to turn out. All right, let's press this in. Oh, I don't know if I got a very good. Let's do it again. Um, all right. Ooh, and let's just do a little book quickly out of that. <laughs> I have a stamp on my book. Look at that. Now that I love. All right. In the meantime, this is drying. So where is my... Uh, let's just do an envelope because I want to see what happens with it. <laughs> Are you guys Jill Press to YouTube channel? Yes. Go to Jill, Jill Press and watch them. Do not do this by <laughs> listening to me. But play with it on your own. Look at that. Oh, my God. That is beautiful. Even though I messed up the print. Wow. And I like the scratchy things from the brayer. So I wonder what happens if we bray over this and do another one. Probably nothing. But it'll just be a lighter version of it. So let's see. Let's see what happens there. Uh, I'm looking for what I have not used yet. I feel like I've been doing this for hours. I don't even know what time it is. Spray that stamp with some water so the paint doesn't dry on it. That's a good idea. Oh, now that cleaned the whole thing off. That's a cool scratchy print. And you could go over that, like you could take, let's see if we can take this, it's probably not still wet, but no, it wasn't. All right, I will put that in water. Um, let's see what else we can do. What a pile of mess here. <laughs> I really like that though. I like it with the stamps. On the envelope and you know that would be a cute little page in a book and then you could do something down the edge maybe strip a washi oh yeah all kinds of stuff all right let's do some more with these colors because i like them and i do also like this with the rubber bands on there all right i should have thought about what i want to do with it ahead of time, but look at how pretty that is. Let's do that stamp again. Because if we did do a journal, we'd need a front and a back. Whoa. Ah! Got it on my pants. All right, let's see. Let's just... <laughs> All right, I'm getting crazy now. I need to have a plan. That's pretty, though, to use it as a stamp. That could be a page in the book, you know? Goes along with it. Now, this other one is dry, so... Mm. Well, I'll have a front and a back on here, and the one will be darker and one will be lighter. All right, just playing is fun. No need to plan. Hi, Dorothy! Stop calling it a mess. <laughs> it's supposed to be a mess. Yeah, see, I, I I really like that. Even though these are not perfect, and I probably had too much, because you can see how it's kind of... I wonder if I can lift that up, and then that's on the other side. See, now I'm getting the hang of this. Of course. Yeah, see how? Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot, but yeah. 
I kind of decided in this year, I'm doing all bright colors. I'm not going to do dark. I'm just, not that I ever did, but I just want things to be light and have less stuff and just kind of clean out a little. Let me move this thing because it's just, it's not doing very much. <laughs> it's inching up. Okay. Let's see what else there is. Any suggestions? You can clean your stamps with a chamois cloth, even with some dried paint, especially the polar rubber is a little tougher for the dried paint than the stamp. Okay, good. Murphy's oil. You sometimes use your gel press as a stamp pad with paint. That's cool. Gel print, perfect. Well, I don't know about that. You're telling me, hi, Margaret. Dark can be dramatic. I know it, and I know that's true. But I still, I don't know. I'm afraid of it. <laughs> can I say? Oh, look at this. Now this, wait a minute. Let's do a little tiny book with this one. Because now all the stuff from the, um, the strings of that are, are putting ink down, paint down. Well, you can't really see. Hmm. Let me put some white over it. I'll use this one. See that? This is where I don't understand because they they put the white down. The whole thing peels up like magic. Let's see if it does. Pretty much. Oh, that's cool. All right, let's see if it's still wet. I'm just not sure how long that map board is thick to pull a good print. You think so? I don't know. I think that's awful pretty. And it did come off, but maybe not as well as other stuff would, but still not bad. Yeah, it's dry. It's it's dried up now, but that's all right. We'll just do more. Well, let's see. We can do this. Now this one's dried up too, but not all the way. That's cool. I and when you press it, oh, some more came out. Actually, because look at that, we've got the little specks. So okay, all right. You you guys can see this is. You might as well just take a, a day, if you can, or at least an afternoon to play with this stuff because it does take a little experimenting, as you can see, and it takes um, a little courage also. <laughs> and uh, But the stuff that you come out with, I mean, this is cool because I could see that going down a border of a page. This came out really neat, like a winter scene you know what else do we have i almost like my first ones the best but see that's too much but all right i learned my lesson that's even kind of cool and you could bring another color in if you took your um you know your inks and you came in and blended over that or another color but you can totally you know fill in this white Maybe you like the white. Maybe it's a nice contrast. I don't know. Anyway, we have all these materials. We have all these cool tools. We should use them. All right, we've got our washi tape, which is now peeling up. So put that on a piece of like your release paper. Now I tore it. So use your, um, your release paper from your adhesives and just put it on there like a like a sticker kind of but it would be fun to do lines of this and on clear tape like um you know the gift wrapping tape that's not uh it's you know got the matte finish you could store it on here so you now assess your trash differently. <laughs> yes. 
You had a lot of fun. You got a bigger plate for Christmas. Good, Charlotta. And you can use inks and paints. That's what I used in the past before uh, when I had my inks with Sizzix, I had the pigment inks and they did work on here. They tended to beat up a little bit. So I didn't always um, like how they came out, but it, it was an interesting look to it, but a little different. The thickness of paint layers make a difference. Yeah. And Okay. All right. I have to read all your comments later, but I think this is maybe my favorite. What do you guys think? What's your favorite? The black? Who, what did you guys like? Or none of it. Who knows? But you know what? You just keep going. This I love. So like um, somebody said, I can't remember who, you know, you can use that as a stamp pad and just use your stamps with it and make sure you clean them right away. But I think that came out really pretty. And that varied color, the the um, just the tones of that, you couldn't get with a stamp pad. So I think that's really a possibility. Um, what else do we have here? Now, on the plaque, it's kind of cool, but I don't know. It's shiny, which is neat. You could layer on top of that. I think that has possibilities, too. And I do like this little string thing going. Um, Where's our page? Oh, here it is. That's kind of cool. I wish my rooster was there. You can kind of see underneath, but I think that my I had too much ink on here for this, so I do need to get better at laying down just the right amount, which I think that is something that takes just practice, you know, that you can feel it and know how much you should have. Uh, and then this one I like too. I don't even know what sides are that one because it's shiny. So this is on the deli paper, and I could see a couple ways to do this. You could crinkle it up and then spread it, uh, well, you know, do a little spray adhesive on your mat board and lay this down like a cover, and you get, like, crinkly uh, texture and just pretty flat, though, you know. Um so that's fun to do. And this one is cool, too. And I could see putting a color over that or maybe just even leaving it. Because like somebody said, the black is dramatic. So um, I did learn a lot today. And I'm going to keep going with this. Here's this other one. I mean, I got a lot done. There's a lot of pages here. So, you know, out of all of them, that one I like a lot, too. Because that would make a nice cover, you know? All right. Well, I will continue to play, guys, and I hope you do. And um, if you want to play along with the team on the blog, you know, we're all going to be playing with gel press this this um, month. So if you have anything, post it in the group so we can see what you're doing. If you find any cool things that you want to add to yours and it came out really cool, let us know so we can all try it. All right. And um, we can, maybe at the end of the month, we can all show like journals that we made or pages or something. That would be fun. Now I have to match the caps. <laughs> can't wait to see what I, I can't wait to see what I make either. <laughs> Mona, with this, it's kind of like you're not sure until it's done. But I can see, some of them seem a little overwhelming to me, like the, all the, the um, color. But you can always layer on top of that if that's too much for you. You know, it's all to your taste. So that's the beauty of it. You can pick whatever colors you want. You can use whatever ever paints you have. It's, it's not uh, one size fits all. And it's kind of unpredictable, which to me is the fun of crafting. Because, you know, if you know it's going to come out the same way every time, I don't know. There is something to be said for that, too. And that's why I like die cutting. But uh, as far as color... It's kind of fun to play around with it. And I'm not saying I loved every one that I did, but um, it, it's good to see what com combinations you like that go together well or not and, um, you know, kind of make it your own. So thanks for watching with me. And uh, I'll be back on Tuesday. Anything you make with gel press and share on social media, make sure to tag gel press. Yes. Uh, hashtag gel press, gel press obsessed. Okay, that's a good idea. So we can do that in the group too.
um, about the demo. Oh, don't don't even call it a demo, Debbie. I'm just playing. <laughs> You're going to go hunting for your gel press. Okay, that's good. All right. Well, thanks for coming, guys. I'm going to hop off, and I will see you on Tuesday. And uh, we'll see how far we got with this. Let's all keep uh, keep practicing and sharing, okay? All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming along, Cheryl, and um, giving the information. That's great. And to everybody else who was on, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. See you soon. All right. Let me... Let me get out of here. I have all these notifications I have to close out before I can end. All right. See you guys. Bye.